this by saying when I was about 15 years old, I was an atheist. I had, uh, was raised Catholic and uh, was kicked out of CCD. I was kicked out of catechism class for asking too many questions. Uh, I didn't understand a lot of what they were saying, but I saw some of the services were nice and beautiful, and, but I didn't see anything of that having to, anything to do with me. And, and church or anything like that had nothing to do with me. So, you agree with that? For real? Alright, cool. Bless you guys. Alright. Bless you anyway. So, so when I was, uh, so when I was about 15 years old, I started examining this book. I started trying to disprove this book, trying to say that uh, aliens created us or aliens created the pyramids, so why didn't they create us? Uh, I had examined a lot of other things like astral projection and uh, all type mind reading, uh, telekinesis, all types of things, trying to gain superpowers. But the superpower was not in me definitely. I had no power to uh, change my heart of the bitterness that I had against this world, against the system, against teachers and against uh, against doctors and teachers that I thought, uh, in, in vulgar language, that I thought they had screwed me over. So I thought they had, uh, you know, done some wrong and harm against me. So I had a lot of hatred for this world. And so when I was about that age, about 15, 16, 17, when I started uh, looking into the Bible, trying to uh, find like, some sort of loophole around it, I discovered that there were some interesting facts in there. Uh, I mean, one thing is, you know, I was a man of science. I was a man who wanted to uh, prove everything uh, scientifically by the scientific me method. Um, I didn't believe anybody's word unless they, unless it was somehow proven by the scientific hey, what's up, community. Daniel? Well, what I had found was a lot of the things in the Bible actually lined up with science and it wasn't opposed to it. Uh, a lot of our philosophies that we think of now have a lot of self-contradictory statements. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, contradictory statements more so than the Bible. If you would look at the Bible, the Bible wouldn't contradict itself, but you would think of a lot of these theories that we, we, we believe and accept as fact uh, is not actually fact. Uh, it's not science fact might actually have more to do with science fiction than anything. Uh, but to have an open and willing mind, to have investigative soul, someone that will use their reason in their mind, in their intellect, that means that is the heart. The Hebrew word for heart is lev. Lev means to accept something with your intellect and with your decisions and with your, and with your desires with your emotions, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and your strength. That is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. I believe everybody tries to do what is right. I believe everybody tries, but we lack the strength. We cannot love the Lord with all of our strength because we lack the strength to do it. But we need that extra power, Him in us, if we do not respect where we had come from, that we had come from this, this earth, we had come from this ground, we are not humble enough to realize that we had come, all of us, from this ground and to, to all of this ground we will go back to. And I was afraid of hell, I was afraid of dying, I was afraid of death. I was afraid of a lot of things, I still struggle with fear sometimes. but. I have been given that power through this uh, searching that was put into my heart. Now I'm looking for those people and I'm asking for those people. I'm not talking to everybody out here, but I'm talking to the people who are looking, who are searching, who are questioning. I'm asking for those people to continue doing that until you find it. Seek first the kingdom and all those things that you desire will come to you. You may not get everything that you want, but you will get everything hey, and then some. Do it like a pro, brother. <laughs> so, just to tell you a story of how these things happen, the Bible in Bible in about 60 seconds, maybe maybe 120 seconds. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. After Adam and Eve were created, humanity was created. 
they procreated, they were kicked out of the garden for being disobedient towards one command. One command. They had two trees. One they could eat from and one they could not eat from and all the other trees in the garden. But yet, they, they wanted to choose the one that they weren't supposed to. It's the same thing if you put a child next to a, uh, a light socket and then you put an apple next to it, he's probably going to touch the light socket and not eat the apple that's good for him. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. We all have that tendency to, if we have the choice between doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing, nine times out of ten, given the chance, with no authority figure over us, nobody looking, we'd likely do the wrong thing. So what happened was God was trying to recreate his earth. He was trying to recreate his earth through certain people that he saw, that he chose, who out of all of that generation of wickedness, all that generation of murder and, and adultery, and just, and just all around stuff that we would see as disgusting. He tried to recreate the world through them. Chose a man Noah, chose a man Abraham, you know Noah and the ark, all the animals in the ark, the flood. That was to wash away the flood of filth that was already on the earth. That had nothing to do with God being cruel. He was trying to wipe out everything that was going to destroy this world. So they chose Abraham, a man who was righteous in his eyes, who, who had a heart to follow him despite what the rest of the world was saying. The rest of the world was saying, no, I don't, don't go there, don't do that. Abraham said, you know what, I don't care, I'm going to do it. Because I know what's right. So then he chose a race of people, he chose a people who he would cleanse through his commandments, who would, who would follow his way. But more than, half, more than a million people in the desert who he taken him out, taken them out of Egypt who were persecuted by Pharaoh, the Egyptian. They were complaining in the desert for 40 years when God had done miraculous things to take them out of where they were being persecuted and in slavery for over 200 years. And yet they didn't believe. They saw miracles in front of their eyes. So a lot of people ask, what's the proof? What's the proof? The Bible clearly says that even if you were to see God standing in front of you, you would still not believe Him. Amen. It takes a miracle in itself to believe. And that's the miracle I'm telling you. A lot of people tell me, where's the proof? Where's the proof? I'm telling you, the proof is in your belief. If you believe, then that's the proof. Amen. That's the proof in itself. So what is sin? What is sin? Sin exactly means this chet in hebrew target that's exactly what it means that dot you're trying to hit a target like an arrow you have a target to hit and you miss the target that's chet you miss the target amen perfect example right there because that's exactly what the word sin means in the bible it's the target definitely absolutely god bless you So, how do we hit the target then? How do we hit the target? Unless somebody tells us what is right and what is wrong. That's what those beautiful commandments are, the Ten Commandments. But people are trying to take that away from us. People are trying to tell you, we have no, you have no right to tell us what to do or what to believe. Well, somebody's got to have some sort of authoritative reasoning because everybody just doing whatever they feel like, whatever moment they feel like doing it, that's going to work for you? How is that working? How is that working? It's not working. It's confusion. We need somebody to tell us how to hit that target. So that's what the commandments are. But yet we still have not the strength. We need the spirit, the very life essence, the very life essence, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, living inside of us to motivate us to do such a thing to give us the strength and the will to do such a thing. The very mind, the very mind that created this world. Think about how amazing that is. If you would just think for one second, 
If you were to think one second how life would be if you knew, if you knew the creator of this earth, if you knew the creator that put you here, how much would that put you in an advantage over all of the, the wiles of the enemy, the one that keep, keeps coming against you? People want to blame the people want to blame the God of the universe, but they don't want to blame anything that the devil does. They don't want to blame Satan. They don't want to blame an enemy. They don't want to blame the adversary, because if you're walking in the adversary's way, if you're walking in the devil's way, that means you're going against the one who says he's your friend, but he's not. And you're blaming the one that put you here that gave you life. And it was giving you this opportunity right now to turn away from those things and start walking in a new direction. Cindy. You ask me, how do you do that exactly? Well, first of all, there was this man, Yeshua, the Messiah, who had walked the earth as God in the flesh. You see, I don't believe that. See, I don't believe that. He was just a man. He was just a prophet. He was just uh, a good guy. He did a lot of good things. Oh, yeah? Well, why did, they, why did they crucify him? Why did they crucify him then? For being a good guy? No. No, no, no. They crucified him because he said he was God. And he did a lot of things that said that he was God. They changed the calendar on account of this man. There was a calendar that was quite different than the one that we have now. But they changed the calendar because of this man. Tell me Jesus Christ or Yeshua the Messiah is not something more than just a man or a prophet. And the last thing I'm going to say here is that this, this complaining in the desert, we have people talking about Oh, my life is so pitiful. My life is so pitiful. I don't have everything I need. I don't have everything I want. I gotta work. I gotta work more than a hundred hours. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. I gotta feed my family and everything like that. I'm such a great guy. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. God has kept you alive. God has given you everything you need. God has given you salvation. God has given you everything that you could possibly desire. And yet, we still have the audacity to complain. We have nothing to complain about. Go to a third world country and see if you can complain. I've been there. I've been to third world countries. I've been to other countries that are that, that are in dire need as compared to what we have here. And that's the last thing I have to say because in the times to come. Sister Cindy. Cindy, yeah. In the times to come, we're gonna need this power. We're going to need this overcoming power because the world's about to get a lot more dark. The world's about to get a lot more darker than this. And if you're not, if your head is not on straight and your heart is not right, then when that time of testing comes, you're not going to know what to do. You're not going to know where to run. You have an open wide door right now. You have a door that's open, but when it's shut, it's shut. Use that opportunity right now. Amen.